What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about one of the biggest things that I figured out this year. It's how to do an awesome second flush for king oysters. If you guys don't know king oysters, these are these really meaty, awesome mushrooms or chestnut mushrooms. Both of these strains I top fruit and the, the top usually dries out and getting a second flush has always been a huge challenge with most growers especially in my greenhouses where we get a lot of sun exposure so today's video we're going to go over all of that that's coming up next <laughs> One of the biggest achievements that that I've worked on this year is getting a second flush for king oysters and chestnut mushrooms, so our top fruiting strains. I know some people might use casing layers. I don't like to do it because we get a lot of fungus gnats, and I don't necessarily think it uh, is necessary for more, most species. And for king oyster, we uh, we definitely don't use a casing layer. And I thought one of the cooler developments that I've discovered is that by fruiting from the bottom, we can get a really nice second flush because in our greenhouses, we get a lot of sun exposure. We don't have high humidity constantly. We do get sun because we use uh, shade cloth over our greenhouses. So when we fruit uh, from the top of the bag and get our first flush, the mycelium on top will dry out and we can't really get a good second flush but what we've discovered is by flipping the bag upside down and letting the bag kind of just sit there dormant in the greenhouse for maybe like five or seven days and then flipping the bag so that you actually pull the bottom of the bag from the bottom substrate up and make that air pocket and cut a little bit of a slit and then you get a nice second flush because the mycelium hasn't dried out and we're encouraging the second flush to fruit upwards from the bottom and for for me like it's it's been a huge game changer because we're getting a significant boost in our yield for second flush i harvest these chestnuts right now and i'll just show you we do uh, six pound blocks so we're looking to get about a pound on the first flush with chestnuts and and king oyster and that's doing six pound blocks 35 percent soy hulls we don't use the masters mix anymore because we do everything on our farm with super pasteurization and we actually unload outside and i've just noticed with high nutrition we were getting uh, contamination problems so the solution to that was to to decrease the amount of soy hulls and we found about 35 33 percent works really great and then we let our bags cool down until uh, about 35 celsius so about 100 fahrenheit 95 100 fahrenheit for you americans and then we remove the bags and we've significantly decreased our contamination and the yields that we're getting uh, are still actually satisfactory for for us we're getting maybe about a pound and a half from first and second flush for most of our species uh, within uh, six to eight weeks. So for th this chestnut block, we uh, I keep everything on data sheets here. These, uh, these are called H3s. I use the Brad Coon system if, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with that. So every day we do production, I do a, a letter. And if I do multiple species, it might be like A1, A2, A3, who, who is in the lab any specific notes so we can keep all of our data right here. This forces me to catalog everything. So this chestnut is an H3. So I can just check my sheet here and go back. And H3, we have chestnut going into the incubation room June 14th. And then 
we started putting those bags into the greenhouse let me see here July 20th so we're looking at five to six weeks of colonization for for chestnut mushrooms I'm sure you guys know you need to let the chestnut colonize completely before they go in otherwise it takes significantly longer to get that first flush and so the chestnut bags are going to the greenhouse July 20th and today is September 15th I believe so we're looking at two months later eight weeks and we're actually we're looking at yeah that's correct eight, eight weeks later we're getting a second flush of chestnuts and often we're we're cleaning our greenhouses uh, between six and eight weeks so if we have chestnuts or, or king oysters that haven't quite fruited the second flush we're just moving them to the next greenhouse or an empty greenhouse to get that second flush and for us that's worth it and i'll show you why i'm going to harvest this bag right here and it's probably close to half a pound i would think we'll just see real quick so we, we grow outdoors in greenhouses I'm sure most of you are familiar with what we do and we always match specific strains with the weather outside so for me strain selection is really important and then getting a good yield for what we're growing is really important well look at that second flush for chestnuts and I'm actually at 0 0.6968 that scale is moving around a lot but 0 0.69 per second flush so these are the chestnuts we're harvesting right now and we've been producing chestnuts for the last two months and really we haven't put blocks in the greenhouse for about I guess about six weeks now all right guys I hope you found this helpful king oysters and chestnut mushrooms are by far some of the coolest mushrooms that I grow on my farm chefs really like seeing some really interesting stuff and that's what really this is all about and figuring this stuff out just takes a lot of time so I'm happy to share with you guys if you guys don't know I've written a book I'll leave a link up there it goes into the details of everything for that and you know I have an education program if you guys are interested we teach a lot of people on my farm how to do this stuff and really it's just about learning the day-to-day -day and all the challenges that goes with having a business and how to start a mushroom farm so check that out guys that's on my website I'll leave a link in the show notes below wtfmushrooms.com we'll see you in the next video